If you're designing a 3D printed product for mass production 3D printing, here are a few things that you really need to consider to make sure that you're reducing your cost and getting the best possible product out of your design. First of all, make sure that no wall has a layer thickness less than one millimeter. A standard FDM printer nozzle is 0.4 millimeters. And in order to make sure that you have a nice reliable wall, you wanna be able to use two nozzle widths, which is 0.8 or up to one with side extrusion. So make sure that every feature of your part is at least one millimeter in width in order to ensure that that nozzle is creating a good quality vertical wall. In the vertical direction, you can go a little bit smaller than that based on what your layer height is, but generally just assume that you have a 3D pixel size of 0.4 millimeters. So make sure that you're going at least one millimeter thick to make sure that it's reliable and strong. Avoid horizontal overhangs. On a part that has a single arm sticking out the side, we have to put support underneath it. This both causes that area that is supported to be slightly deformed and creates a lower quality appearance. It also adds on additional labor of having to post-process that part, whereas a part without that overhang could go straight into a box and ship out the door, which is way more affordable. The way to avoid overhangs like this is to just go ahead and put a chamfer underneath it. And we have a whole video talking about this particular topic. Make sure that the first layer of the print is as simple as possible. Avoid sharp corners and don't put text on the first layer. When the first layer is going down on a print bed, you want it to adhere reliably and well. And in order to do that, you want it to be as simple as possible. You don't want a lot of detail and you wanna get as close to basically a perfect circle as you can. Again, we've discussed this in another video in quite a bit of depth of how to optimize and the direction to go, but just eliminate as much detail as you can and make it as round as you possibly can. And that is the best way to make a good first layer. And with that, rounding is very important. Make sure that you round or fill at every vertical edge of your part. The reason for this is it will improve the print time of your part because sharp edges with the nozzle of the printer moving around cause it to slow down and speed up because it has to go to the corner, basically stop and change direction. If you round that outer corner, it's able to travel through it like a car going around a tight turn. If a car had to go to a turn, stop, back up, and then go the opposite direction, it would make the lap a lot slower. But if you round that corner, the nozzle is able to fly right around the edge. It's able to print faster. It creates a better looking part and it just is more efficient overall. Do not put cavities into your part. This is a vestigial idea from old manufacturing methods. Everyone is used to trying to remove material from parts, but 3D printing doesn't have this issue because we're able to fill in large volumes with honeycomb structure, which makes the part stronger. You can actually make a fully solid large cube with all six walls enclosed and have it be an enclosed volume that you could never make before. And do remember that this is a different type of process. If you want more strength, add more volume. Historically, everybody is used to cutting out material, but by cutting out material, you make thin walls. When you're printing those thin walls, they can be weak. In addition to this, remember that the layer lines do exist and don't create thin features that can cause the layer lines to unzip. We don't want those stress concentrations. Go for a thicker, chunkier part to make sure that you have the strength that you need. And this is a good time to remember that there are layer lines designed for the layer lines. Put a texture on your part and that will hide the layer lines. Don't push for higher resolution, that'll increase your cost. Apply a texture either in CAD or request a texture be applied by us where we can digitally add a little bit of noise to the outside of the part so that it no longer shows the layer lines. If you have a high tolerance feature, make it compliant. Don't attempt to go for a really high tolerance center hole in the side of a block. This can create a lot of extra cost because it has to be very carefully checked and often at times you have to compensate for material shrinkage and other sorts of factors. Instead, design the hole to be compliant. Give it some flex features, either make some cutouts on the edge and make it a little bit smaller or use options like grip fins in order to allow it to grasp the part that has to be inserted into it. And last, minimize bed surface contact. In order to mass produce a part with 3D printing, you don't wanna have people have to pull your part off of a printer. But if it's a pyramid with a big old wide base that fills the entire print bed, it's gonna be very difficult to not remove it manually. If you can design it to have a minimal contact surface on the first layer, then it becomes ejectable, where our machines can automatically remove them and then move on to the next part. It also eliminates the surface defect of that first layer looking different from the rest of the part. So design your parts to sit on an edge at a 45 degree angle. If you're making an electrical enclosure, instead of printing it broadside down, turn it at a 45 degree angle and now you can mass produce it very quickly, very reliably, and almost everything will be in the correct plane to where it's all very strong. 
So if I was to sum up this entire video with just a few rules and a single statement, make your part thicker, make it rounder, and minimize the first layer contact area, and avoid supports as much as possible. Those are the main things. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with a part that is really thin and looks like some kinds of terrible injection molded part that will end up causing problems in the 3D printing process. You cannot put a square peg into a round hole. Printing is a different process. You have to design for that process, otherwise you will be disappointed with the result. So hopefully that was a good summary of all the kind of main things to be aware of when designing for FDM. You wanna make sure that you have these principles in mind when you're designing your part to make sure that it's fully optimized for mass production. We have a lot of other videos on the channel diving into the deep whys and hows of each one of these different features. So do go check those out and check out the playlist and the recommendations here around us. YouTube thinks you should probably watch one of these over here. Have a great day, everybody.